Welcome back. We have the final two blind levels of day two of the Norwegian Championship main event here at Card Casino Slovakia. We had a very entertaining table the last two hours and hoping for much of the same here. Here's a quick look at the lineup. Don't recognize all these names. I do recognize Alf and I am told that the player in seat number seven is a former broadcaster on Norwegian sports television. <laughs> and I'm not sure how to pronounce Glessel's name, so we're going to call him Glessel as the mystery card's on the button. Opening up, Jacobson calling. So apparently there may be a small issue because Wessel did have the cards <laughs> over there. He put them back over again, but we don't mind the mystery hand every once in a while. We don't know what he had there to take down the pot, but it's always nice to win that first pot on the TV table. And he has a massive stack of nearly one million in chips. Uh, apparently he was putting it on the wrong box. <laughs> okay. If it's just one hand, that's fine, but we can't go two hours with Glessel having mystery cards. That wouldn't be fair to the rest of the players at the TV table. Andrea. Oh my God, where is Yeah, this is started. Um, <laughs> Owie <laughs> folds. Yeah, it looks like the names yeah. are going to be slightly more challenging at this last table. But it's Halsonson opening with the ace 10 suited from early position to 22,000. Blinds are now at 5,000, 10,000 with a 10,000 big blind to ante. For those of you just tuning in, my name is Jason Glatzer. I've been here all week and will be here until the <laughs> end. <laughs> I've been enjoying <laughs> every <laughs> moment, regardless of what I'm doing, whether I'm in the booth, talking to players. I've been having so much fun that I personally have not yet played a hand of poker. We shall change that at some point this week, I think anyway. But Halsonson, meanwhile, it looks like he maybe gets a walk. Indeed, he does. <laughs> he also has a massive stack, more than 800,000 in chips. So lots more chips on the table than the last table. Last table was very entertaining. Mostly because of Roar, but uh, all the other players as well providing some action. And like the other TV tables throughout the week, including today, the players are very social, having a good time. You can feel that as you're walking around the room that it isn't just a TV table. Now we can learn a little bit about Gressel, about how he acts in open pots from late position. From the button, I feel he would have already opened. But it looks like he wants to do so from the hijack, decides against it. And Jacobson raising it up to 21,000 from the button. Bernson, who was the broadcaster I was just referring to, folds. And El Musawi, <laughs> will he defend with the Jack-7? <laughs> looks like he's getting ready to. He wouldn't be in the worst of shape against Deuces. You can see that it's basically a coin flip. Obviously, he doesn't know his opponent has those Deuces, though. Seeing on a stack of 420. <laughs> looks like Jacobson also likes to have a lot of fun. So I had the stream 
on mute temporarily just to learn a little bit more about the broadcast. So they have the wrong name accidentally in there. His name is Davey. So far, he's not been involved in any hands. But we're very early at the TV table. And appreciate Spede coming by to tell me that, or I would have been calling him by the wrong name all the time. And another player with a lot of chips. Where did all these chips come from? Look at all these chips. Ikram with nearly a million as well. Opening with the 10-9 offsuit from early position for a min race. And so far, nobody having any premium cards or anything else they want to play back at. And El Musawi with the 5-4 suited. Doesn't look like he wants to toss it away. Does call from the small bind. And Halsonson will complete from the big bind. To bring the pot already up to 70,000. Three-way going to the flop. And only El Musawi connecting, but with bottom pair on the King of Diamonds, Ace of Spades, Five of Spades, flop. Checks around to the original Oprah Ikram, who can rep those aces and kings. Let's see how sticky El Musawi is with his bottom pair. Apparently not very, which is uh, usually smart. In this case, he was ahead, and Halsonson has a much easier fold. And we finally see an end from Musawi's chip count. He has one million in chips. This will be a much different dynamic than the last table. Like everybody has chips, it seems. <laughs> Looks like we should have a couple of early position folds. Vassal should not be playing his four due off, neither should Sather. Jacobson with something a little bit better, but also tossing it away. And he could and be around to El Musawi Andre, on the button. Are you from Estonia? And when you see an ace on the button and it's an open pot, expect it open. El Musawi racing to 22,000. Halsonson gets out of the way with this jack five from the small bind. A burden also with an ace in his hand. Is three betting his A6 offsuit to 65,000. And El Musawi, will he fold the best hand? He can call and play it in position if he thinks he's able to get away with the four bet. He may be doing that as well. But that's going to be hard to do. Feel that you're going to get away with it when. Your opponent started the hand with about 20 big blinds and only has 139,000 back after making that three bet. Broden does look a little bit nervous about the situation. It's hard to keep a poker face sometimes. El Musawi looks very confused. Maybe that's how he looks at every hand. Maybe that's his poker face. We have not seen him yet at the TV table to know that for sure. Broden would love to see a fold here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so we taking his time. Perhaps trying to get a read on his opponent. Although this is a new table for us, it's not a new table for the players, so there could be some interesting dynamics that we're unaware of at this point in time that the players are already aware of. But 
Al Musawi still thinking it over. It looks like we'll see less hands at this feature table than some of the other ones. And Broden gets him to fold the better hand, picks up some much needed chips. Very nice play there by Broden. Getting the bigger hand to fold with his three bet, and Broden now looks like he's cracking a small smile now. A little bit bigger than that. <laughs> suited and that goes in the muck and here's a3 off well we spent a lot of time with the under the gun player not showing the cards but here we cannot see jake's cards but i'm pretty sure he did not put them in the box at least quite yet at least one player called but the graphics uh Behind here. Now they're catching up. Ikrim defending his big mind with Jack 10 and flopping top two pair on the Jack and Club, five of spades, ton of diamond, rainbow flop. We don't know what Hank Jacobson has. If he has a pair of fives, a pair of tens, a pair of jacks, king, queen, we could see a big pot developing. It may all start with this bet of 25. Ikram check calls with this top two. Seven of clubs on the turn. Ikram likely still ahead with this top two pair. The nine eights did pair up. And now with the board pairing up, Ikram two pair is slightly counterfeited you know, to an over pair, but now still looking for some value. Jacobson quickly calling. And we shall never know what Jacobson had, but it wasn't as good as Jack's at 10. Perhaps <laughs> he had something like Ace Jack or something with the <laughs> He probably would have kept going anyway on the turn with something like Queens or Kings. <laughs> A few early and mid position pulls until El Musawi looking down at the ace three suited, looking like he wants to raise it. Maybe 22,000. Indeed, it is the 22,000. But he's running into a bigger ace by Halsonson. An ace queen suited. Who does just call? Micro making a little bit of a loose call here from the small blind playing head up position. And, and another player with an ace, ace jack. It's not as good as Halsonson's <laughs> ace queen. Let's see if Gussel though calls or folds. I don't think we're going to see. I mean, not folds, calls or three bets. I don't think we're going to see a fold though. Not at this price. Not with Ace Jack. Does just call. It's been a while since we've seen four people see a flop. And certainly now, Halsonson can be happy about this flop. Two queens and a five. 91% equity. Russell has some back doors to a straight and to a flush. That's why he has 5%. Checks around to Halsonson. 
who also checks it. And Ikram may feel he's good after check the round, after pairing up his nine for two pair. Of course, we know he's behind the trips of Halsonson. And if it checks back around the house it's in, I think the second time around, we'll see him try to get value. And now the board's starting to get scary in terms of draws. Not only is there a potential diamond flush draw, but the jack 10 would be an open ender. But Glessel doing the dirty work for him, betting 32,000. Halsus in calls. And Ikram will also call, although we can see he's drawing dead. And six of diamonds on the river. Let's see if somebody tries to rip that flush. Ikram will not with showdown value. is the only one without real showdown value. So I'd expect if we see an open on the river, it will be by Glessel. Hausenson may also try for value if it checks to him thinking that nobody has the flush, but they may call nine. shouldn't be too concerned about anybody having the 7-8 or having a better queen that filled up or anything else after checks around them. Let's see if we could squeak out some value from Ikram after betting 55,000. That's really the only place value can come unless Glessel is inclined to make a hero call. Probably not now that Ikram called. Ikram will get the bad news that Halsonson slow played his trips to win a tasty pot. And is that about 1.2 million? <coughs> Very well played there by Halsonson. Thank you. Looks like that pot got Halston set up to about a million, not 1.2 million. I was adding the chips to what was already showing, but the chip count already took that into account. Broden can't be too disappointed as a short stack to get away with one with King 9. If it's 3 bet, he's going to have to get rid of it. If he's called, he doesn't know where he stands and doesn't have chips that he can really afford to be uh, losing at all. We need some service, service. Service, can I get, can I get service? He needs a cola and I need the water. Oh, <laughs> it. <laughs> and it's Davey here with the sevens. Not a lot of chips, but certainly openable. When I say not a lot, it's still 24 bigs or 26 before the bet. And shows his sevens. Jacobson <laughs> says, Sevens from heaven. <laughs> Alpha always has a good sense oh, of humor. <laughs> I can't say I know him super well, but we've met before.
Glassell here. Maybe this is a stream bed. I don't know. He's getting a little feisty with that open with Jack Six from the cutoff up to 23,000. Calling for the button with the bad ace. But Jacobson with a little bit better of an ace, and it is suited. And it is three betting. Depending on what the big blind has, big blind has queen five. That's going away. That should get Glesso out of the way. <laughs> unless he's really <laughs> going to be playing crazy and we see a four bet. Or is jack six is really jack jack, but I think it is jack six. The reader hasn't been wrong at all. And well played there by Jacobson. Instead of playing out of position with his ace 10 suited with the call, the three bet gets in the pot right now. <laughs> Folds and now Glessel, who just opened with the jack six from the cutoff, will be opening the ace three suited from the hijack in an open pot. This is a bit more standard. Sather folds his ace deuce. And let's see now if Jacobson has some funkiness to him. He didn't snap pull the 10 4 off from the button. He just got away with one three bet. Is he going to try to three bet Glassel again? Not this time. Maybe he shall fold his king six most likely. <laughs> Mamma sits at the table. 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 And there's some people that defend every two, and Alma Sawi is not one of them. And Gressel picks up the pot with the ace three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It sounds like there's some beverages coming pretty soon for the feature table. Russell, who opened the last two pots, although he didn't open the one before, is back in action. He seems to like the play. He has 9-7 suited, opening for 23,000. Yeah, early middle position. second hand. Halsonson not wanting to play his rags. And all of a sudden Glessel over 900,000 after 
stealing the box uh, plays. Hey, I don't know if you describe yeah. the Ace 3 suited as a steal, but pretty much any time you don't have a premium hand and everybody folds onto an open raise, it's considered a steal. Russell taking a hand off, not liking his 9 6 suited from early position. Holds around to Davy Wapney. Did open to 20,000 from the men raise. <laughs> 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 And a mystery card. And jamming it for 251,000. So if Wapney uh, decides to commit his stack, we'll find out what that mystery card is. But we can guess that it's a jack or an ace. He could be doing this with some kind of suited connectors, jack 10, jack queen. We don't know enough about Broden to know if he's been doing this wide. It is a 25 big blind jam. And we may never know as Davey Wafi does hold his hand. So we went from one entertaining table right to another one. So far, no fireworks. And it looks like we're getting a new deck. So bear with us for a moment. <laughs> and they got that new deck sorted very fast.
Tosses in here with the nines. We could see something erupt. Call. It's just calling. Call. 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 calling as well with the AC from the small bind. It looks like Wessel may be thinking about a three bet, but I think he will just complete. Oh, I think it's a good one. No, it's cheap popping. It's on the big line. <laughs> Bring the pot up to 90,000 in four way. To the 2 3 10 flop with two clubs. Baby Wafi improving the top pair. Russell with middle pair. Halsonson may still think he is good with his nines if he thought he was good before. With only one overcard to the nines there. While Ekram is the only one who really didn't get a piece of this board at all. Halsonson didn't necessarily get a piece, but it wasn't necessarily the worst board for a time. Very interesting here. Glesso betting 37,000. Baby Wafi jamming it for 220,000. This will likely get Halsonson out of the way. Could have been different than Glesso. To do anything with Davy Wapney, all of a sudden, up to 
he has already shown he likes to play wide in position. Let's see if Jacobson calls it really bad. He's been playing with us so probably the 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 day. So we know he's likely not to hold. That's a pull up the bet here. I think it's going into the muck. Jacobson on the button. I expect him to open his ace deuce. Right, Murphy. Does min raise it. But Wathi waking up with the fish hooks. Is three betting at the 60. Ah, David, that was probably four. Back off, back off. Hey! And after Jacobson folds, I think he showed the ace. Wathi showed his jacks to the table. And he's up to 360,000 now. This time is just flying by. I can't believe we're on the penultimate level of the day. Some of the players might be tired. I would love for this to keep going and going. But the good news is, even though it's going to end soon for us in the next hour and a half, we will be back tomorrow for even more main event action. And Russell back to his creative ways, opening the 23,000 with 6-5. From the low jack. <laughs> you could see how much fun the players are having. I right, wish we could get some subtitles. Is Glessel showing? He does show. But the way these players are having fun, it appears even more like a home game than how serious this event is. It's the Norwegian Championship main event. The winner not only will collect a massive prize in a few days, but will also have their portrait taken, be enlarged to a more than life-size model, and go along with all the other Norwegian main event champions of the Hall of Fame. 
Yeah, yeah. Three. I'm not sure if it's officially called the Hall of Fame, but if you go down to the main floor, you can see massive portraits of each of the winners from the previous events. But Russell, this time he actually has a hand that I would raise with. It's with the King Jack suited. Much better than that 6-5 we just saw him get away with. Also saying call it a position from the small blind with Jack 10. He's a little bit dominated at this point in time. That can all change, but it does not on the King 4 4 5. But he can represent that the change, especially since Bessel didn't have a queen. And since it's checked over to another player's check. And now, Alsonson actually does get there with his hand, but with the queen on the board. He may not want to bet. He does bet, but don't expect Wessel to go anywhere. Now he has an open ender. The broad player is straight. Although he's not getting necessarily proper pot odds to call with the implied <coughs> odds. On top of that, this would be a call or a raise. A raise might even work here. But the safest play is to call. If you want to be a net, you can fold, but you shouldn't be folding here. And it is a raise. Glessel not only showing hard pre-flop, showing hard post-flop. Raising his draw and putting Halsus in, in a tough spot. Raising to 130. Halsus in would have checked, back, checked initially if he probably had a queen in his hand. Being he was out of position and not the aggressor. However, on the flop, on the turn, it doesn't have to be the time he can make it with. It could be, like it is, but it could also be the queen. It could also be bluffing. And Kals is never able to make a call here. We see he's ahead at this point in time. But the ace of diamonds on the river gives Glessel Broadway. It's going to be hard for him to get a lot of value, but maybe he can squeak out some. He at least was able to raise that turn and get value there. So he really doesn't get value now. That raise on the turn did help. He's trying to look like he's in for pain. We know he's not. Obviously, there's some full houses, pot fours that are ahead of him, but that's about it. And how many of those combinations does the big blind have? Small blinds, for that matter. Maybe the pocket fours, but there's only one combination of that. Would yeah, that check the river? When it's an ace? Possibly not. So this is all for Hollywood and for Halsesson, in my opinion, uh, anyway. Uh, it could be different. Uh, yeah, that they made some noise, but they were no good. I'm recording this <laughs> instead of live commentating. <laughs> It would be much different. I would have more of a neutral tone, but I do believe this is a little bit of volley winning. And based on the bet size, indeed it is. It looks like 230,000 into a pot of 326,000. Also, it's in all he has, even though he improved on the turn, all he has in the river is really a bluff catcher. We did see that Glesso was partially bluffing with a draw on the turn when he raised it up. But it was a draw raise for him and the draw completed. Maybe Halsesson is trying to figure out if his opponent had a queen, but then why would it be betting raising? Oh, uh, Halsesson able to get away from a hand. And Glesso is now over one million in chips. position matters, it does not to him. He likes playing hands. This time at the 10-9 suited, raising it to 23,000. A 
punch of holds. Let's see what El Musawi opts to do with his King Jack from the cutoff. He hasn't made a decision yet. Or at least has a chair to decision if he's already made it. Sometimes players like to take their time even after they make a mental decision. Perhaps to get a read on the hand as well for later on in the hand. And Al Musawi, three betting for 65,000. And if nobody else wakes up with a hand, I don't expect to see Glessel playing his 10 9 suited from out of position. But Broden waking up with the Rockets, so it's a mistimed three bet by Al Musawi. He had no way to know that the small blind would have Rockets, so. Now is Broden just going to get it in here? Is he going to play it smooth with this call and then try to play his aces out of position? He does indeed jam, folks. I mean, even though both players are likely to fold here, it is a nice pot nonetheless. It does increase his stack significantly by more than 100,000 chips, and when you're sitting on 286, that is a quite a big percentage. But of course, Broden would love a call here. Unless, of course, he has a bad beat is coming, but he will be a heavy favorite if he does get a call. But Al Masawi, despite some delay, opts to fold. He probably didn't see that one coming and was just trying to play against a more active player. So, although Broden didn't get to see a showdown with his aces, he's up to nearly 400,000 in chips. I think that's really the only play as a jam there. Uh, Flatting that okay. from the small point, but it's a three bet, is a bit uh, <laughs> weird, <laughs> awkward. <laughs> you just have to hope your opponent has a hand they can call with because you're going to be crushing pretty much everything. The best case scenario is that they have a hand like Ace King where they have the call and you're absolutely demolishing Ace King with aces. It's actually the one hand you don't want to see uh, when you have Ace King is aces. Even Kings isn't the end of the world for Ace King. And if you see Aces, you'd rather have pretty much any hand that doesn't have an Ace in it. You have a better chance of winning the hand at that point. Not that you have a great chance. Unless you're playing the amazing game of Omaha, then Aces is a story. But we are not playing that today. We did have the Omaha final table the other night. And Halston able to get a pot with a raise of 22,000. Nine offsuit, nobody else having anything to go on. Sawi to open from the low jack. It is a pretty hand even from under the gun. He would likely be opening. So certainly from the low jack. Right, 22. Ball, ball. Opens for 22,000. Ikram though, showing up with a bigger ace from the button. Just tossing out one chip to call. Perhaps a three bet would be in order, but typically <laughs> players do like three or four betting. <laughs> with <laughs> with <laughs> Ace flat suited is one of those hands. <laughs> of so let's see if Glessel opts to uh, three bet. It doesn't appear like he's ready to fold. But if he does fold. I suppose he likes to be the first one to act, or not act at all with these kind of hands. And Seth there is calling from the big line. Pops a flush draw. He had the cut shot to the straight on the 8 7 king flop with two spades. Al Masawi, who was the initial opener, this king helps his range, but he doesn't have a king in his hand. Okay. 
Looks yeah. like he will not continue this time. Will Ikram try to push this one away? Also checking it all the way through, and the three of diamonds on the turn keeps Ikram ahead, but you can see equity-wise, Sether, well, that's still on the flop. You can see equity-wise, Sether is fairly close. There's any five gives him a straight, any spade gives him a flush. The five of spades gives him a flush, so I shouldn't say any, any, any five. But any non-spade five gives him a straight, and any spade gives him a flush. So he's not in the worst of shape as well. It's just going to be hard for him if Ekram bets big because of his stack size. And it does look like Ekram is going to bet after checking around on the flop. 40, for 40,000 into a pot of 81,000. Where if El Musawi had bet 6-4 suited, it would be a fairly easy call. For Sather, I think he either has to recognize that it checked through on the flop and just get it in here or give up on the hands and call and leave yourself with eight big blinds seems like the worst of the options, but that's just running through the situation in my head. Everybody plays it differently. And he is making a raise, folks. This should work. He jams it in for 132,000 with just his draws. I love this move, and it is going to work most likely. Although Ikram not immediately folding, does fold. Well played there by Sether. <laughs> Recognizing that it checked around on the flop, having a little bit less equity on the turn. But waiting for that little bit of extra value to get in before making his move. And now has some breathing room near the end of the evening. We likely have about 10 to 15 minutes left. Jeg står her ute ved de bordene ganske rett ved TV-bordet, og tenkte jeg kunne gi en liten oppdatering på hvordan det står til med bordet som akkurat har vært TV-bord. Uh, akkurat nå er det en pott som spilles også her, men jeg kan jo starte med Godse Søgstad som sitter ved siden av meg her. Har det vært, uh, ja, jeg kan egentlig ta den potten litt først. Det er 9000 i bånden her. Det er Aspås som til slutt syner. Bordet ligger dame 10, 10, 8, 6 med to spar. Det vises S6 for et par i 6, og det er Aspås som har syn. Og så skal vi se at han viser da opp en otter, og det, hva sier du da, Aspås? Hent det hit. Hvordan har det gått etter at du byttet vekk fra TV-bordet? <laughs> så der, er det så der, Basil? Jeg snakker aldri med folk som er lavere rike enn meg selv. <laughs> en Aspås som hadde mange sutonger, ikke fullt så mange akkurat nå, en som ser ut til å ha bygget litt, det er deg. Ja, det går greit nå. Det er bare cirka 700 eller noen, tror jeg. Spørsmålet er... Seks, ja, 700 nå. Og hvor mange av de kommer fra Aspås? Alt for få. Jeg, jeg skulle ønske det var flere. Hvis vi har skutt på det her. Rett ut. <laughs> det er i hvert fall en, en litt aggressiv, men likevel ganske hyggelig stemning på det som var TV-bord for litt siden. I love how they just brought back our old feature table. I did get a chance to give Roar a high five for his performance at that feature table, but I'm told that's nothing unusual. He's a fun player, likes action, and it's working out quite well for him. <laughs> and Broden with the Cowboys. Oh wow, this could be a big spot for Broden to double up with Glessel showing up at the Jacks. I expect a three bet from him. This is an unfortunate spot for Glessel though, because normally he wouldn't be cre getting any credit being how active he's been. And this time he shows up with the hand, but Broden showing up with something better. Is looking ready to three bet. Perhaps they're respecting Broden a little bit. Can save him. But does three bet it and three bet it on the bigger side, the six and a half bigs facing a min raise with his fish hooks from the cutoff. Nobody else waking up with anything now. Broden will likely four bet. He may try to disguise his hand, but I think the four bet is the more likely scenario. We could be looking at absolute mayhem here. A massive pot, the biggest that we've seen on the feature table, depending on what happens next. Because the more that gets in pre-flop, we could even be all in pre-flop at some point. 
the more likely that this is going to be a monstrous pot with kings against jacks. Right. And it's a four bet to 12 and a half big lines by Broden. <coughs> Vessel now thinking over his options. He has a massive stack. I don't think he can get away from his jacks, not with his image. And if you're going to four bet somebody light, it's going to be Glessel. We know Broden's not light. Can Glessel figure that out too? The problem is, would Broden be doing this with tens and nines? Well, he would be doing it with ace king, most likely anyway. Perhaps he'd be peeling ace king. So you have to figure out if you're ahead of enough four bets with your jacks. Glessel likely is, and that's kind of the problem. Vessel could opt to just call as well he, and play his Jackson position. But as we mentioned earlier, there's a hundred ways to play Jacks. It's very difficult to find the right one. One of the trickier hands to play, especially with this. And he is laughing. Not liking his situation, actually. This could save him. That would be the fold of the day if he can let go of this. I just don't see how that can happen. Unless he has a read that he is crushed range-wise. Would Broden only be four betting with queens, kings, and aces, and ace-king? And maybe not even all of his ace-kings, and ace-king suited. But once you start tossing hands like tens and nines and other possibilities. <laughs> it's at least good that Glessel is not acting impulsively. This could be a mood killer for Glessel too if he does wind up committing more chips. He's trying to figure out where he's at. Can you make the fold of the day at the TV table, Glassel? Otherwise, get ready for some mayhem. by him. Some of the players are, are still joking around to each other. That's not influencing the action. Nobody's talking to Vessel. Nobody's talking about the hand. They're talking about something else entirely. Although for all I know, they could be talking about the hand. I don't understand Norwegian. But it doesn't appear like they're talking to either Broden or Vessel. And continuing the conversation they started a while ago. I do like the three bet by Glesso because of how active he is. And Glesso gets away with his jacks. Wow. <laughs> wow. When he looks back at this later, and I'm sure he will, he will get to see if he made the right play. Absolutely amazing fold. That is easily the fold of the day to get rid of your jacks there. Not the easiest thing to do. And it shows you the intelligence of Glesso who still has the most chips at the table. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Figured out that there weren't enough four bets 
buy Broden for it to be worthwhile to get more chips with his jacks. After this bind level, we will see the final bind level of the evening. It will be 6,000, 12,000 with the 12,000 big blind ante after the sand. And now Broden, after, after not getting full value with the Cowboys, but still not needing to see a showdown. Didn't look like a limp to me, but maybe it was. Good king nine suited from an early position. And being that the big blind folded, that was it. it wasn't a, uh, a limp at all. But it looked like a raise to either 20 or 25,000. It doesn't matter what the hold it, doesn't matter what the raise sizing was. sevens under the gun, but Ikram this time with an overpair to the sevens with his queens will be three betting. <laughs> it looks like the 70, but let's get that confirmed. It is indeed the 70,000. And it gets really interesting because this is the third hand and I really love has opened up for being a big guy. So then Broden might interpret this one of two ways. I can hand. He's trying to push me off the pot, seeing that I have all of a sudden become active. But he's become active with hands. Jacobson tossing away his ace ten. It looks like Davy Watney already. No, he hasn't pulled it yet. He should pretty soon. Baby Wafi decided what to do. Ikram wasn't messing around. Ooh. He did have the queens. I would have to know, uh, to the idea, like. <laughs> and then I pulled it somewhere. Not if I knew that I had the chips back. Yeah, so I saw it, but it comes down. I don't know. Swung south chips, so I hate to look at it. But I guess that's just me, right? getting closer and closer to the money. We're going to try to get the payouts. One of the crew is going to try to help us with that. I don't think we'll be in the money today, but it's still nice to have that information. Jacobson with the eight, so opening to 25. It's a little more than a min-raise, but El Musawi likely will get it in. He has 300,000 in a stack. He could 3-bet to something like 70 as well, but I see a jam coming. And indeed, it's a jam to 299,000. 
Now is Jacobson gonna wanna risk cap his stack with eight? Well, first Broden, now with the premium hand with queens, we're going to see fireworks. There's no way Broden's getting away from his queens. No way that he's getting away with his queens. Because would El Misawi be doing that with aces or kings? Probably not. And Broden coming in over the top of his queens for 472,000. Jacobson <laughs> pretends to throw up on the table. <laughs> A big graphic there. <laughs> Does fold. And it's a coin flip with El Musawi at risk. Oh, Meanwhile, oh, Broden oh, will be left short if he's unable to hold. There's 641,000 in the pot. You could see that if El Musawi doubles up, that's what he will have, and Broden would have 173. If not, it will be El Musawi on the rail, and Broden with over 800,000. So far, the Queens are ahead on the 10 9 5 flop with two clubs, neither player with clubs in their hand. Nobody with any back doors to the flush. The jack of spades follows on the turn. Now a queen, although would give Broden a set, would give El Musawi Broadway. However, the king would give Broden a straight. And the six of clubs on the river, very unfortunate for El, El Musawi, waking up with a premium hand, but unfortunately running into something a little bit better. And we have some payouts now, folks. Thank you very much. We have uh, tonight's winner. I mean, the winner in a few days getting 110,000, uh, 200, 788 euros, 768 euros. I do not know quite yet how many will be getting paid, but we shall have that in a second. Bear with us on the top 111 players. will go home with 1,405 euro. So quite a nice min cash, but more importantly, that top prize of 110,000. So in case I stated it incorrectly, the top 111 players will go home with 1,405 euro. The winner once again in a few days time is going to get a shit ton more, pardon my French, 110,768 euro. Thank you very much to Shared Hands, not only for the stream, but for getting me that information. This crew is absolutely amazing. We don't live too far apart, but they're always on the road. They live in Latvia, I live in Lithuania. But the Latvians that are here have been super helpful. There's a lot of pride going on in the Baltics with everything going on in the world. It brings actually the three Baltic countries more together, not further apart. And I feel much love for these guys at share hands. But Broden opening up from the small blind a bit wide after uh, going from small stack to big stack in a hurry. And Ikram with an ace is happy to at least call. And Igram is still ahead, but both players with a straight draw. Broden's is open-ended. A nine or a ace will help him. And is betting that open-ender for 30,000. 30. Igram may actually give up on the best hand here, and I wouldn't blame him. And indeed does fold, so well played by Broden there. Raising it up with the rags from the small blind. And then betting his draw and getting the job done. Expect him to open up any pocket pair from the cutoff. 
25. Does open for a little more than a min raise. Now Broden with the ace. We don't know what that other card is, but perhaps his actions will dictate that. Although, if it's suited, then it could be a bit wider, so a three bet won't necessarily tell us what he has. But he is three betting. Yes. A three bet to 65. And we're about to find out what Broden's other card is. He's been asked to put his cards into the box. Still hasn't shown up though. So for now we know he has the ace of hearts, but Halsonson flopping bottom set on this eight five queen with two clubs flop. So it's possible if Rodin's student suited, he has a backdoor flush draw. Other than that, we know he's gonna be far behind. Does bet 70,000 after Halsonson checks it over to him. Looks like Halsonson is going to quickly call to already bring this pot up to 300,000. And the ace of diamonds on the turn. So if Broden has pocket aces, then yes, it is a massive cooler for Halsonson. But as it stands, we believe Halsonson is ahead and checks again. Let's see if Broden slows down now that his ace has at least paired, if not more. It doesn't look like he's slowing down at all. Bets 100,000. Perhaps he has something like ace queen for two pair, which would e be an even bigger core. Also, it's in double checking that he has that set. And raises it to 225,000. Happy enough that the pot is big as it is, but hoping for more. Hoping that ace helped Broden, but not too much. It's, you'd be happy if it helped them a little bit more, like with an ace queen, of course. And perhaps it did, because we have a call here by Broden. And already 750,000 in the pot. This is a massive pot, and a six of spades on the river. Shouldn't change anything based on the one card that we know Broden has. Also, it's in expect a jam from him after basically that check raise being called on the turn. Does indeed jam for 390,000 now. Now we know Broden doesn't have pocket aces. He'd be snapping those off. We'll find out what he has. He made the call for a 1.5 million chip pot, set of fives for Halsonson. Let's see if we can zoom in on the cards by Broden. It doesn't look like we'll ever know what Broden has in that hand. We know he had an ace X, and Broden now short on chips. Halsonson getting there with his fives, and is easily the table chip leader with 1.5 million in chips near the end of the night. Massive pot there by Halsonson. Showing no emotion despite winning 1.5 million chip pot and doubling his stack. He's the quietest table on the player. And the rest of the table got a bit quiet too. It would be great to know what Broden had there. If he called that quickly, I'm going to assume it was two pair. Perhaps it was an ace king though and he felt that his opponent was trying to push him off. I'm pretty sure it wasn't a weak ace. We know it wasn't ace ace, so that would have won the hand, and Broden would have called much faster than he did. But Halsonson up to 1.5 million. To have more than 100 big blinds at this stage in the tournament is amazing. And it looks like there may have been a problem with some of the cards, so we are getting a deck replacement. That can happen pretty easily. You have to bring so many of these RFID decks 
to every event when you're running a TV table. These are much more expensive than a normal deck of cards, but it's all part of running a production. And without these special cards, we would have far less entertainment. We wouldn't know what players have unless they showed it down. I've commentated that way before, but it's far less interesting for me, and therefore far less interesting for those watching, other than the fact that you have some more sweats. But I enjoy seeing when people are bluffing opening light, and those are the kind of things that you may miss out on. I do a lot of reporting, and you don't see that stuff, and then a lot of those hands go unreported. But in a live stream, you see everything. Absolute mayhem there. And Broden, who just eliminated an opponent, chipped up a bit when with Kings against Jacks. And then won a huge flip with Queens against Ace King. Now has crumbs in a stack today. <laughs> We're still 39 players off the money, so it's going to be hard for him to basically just take this stack into the money. He would need a bit more. So he's going to have to do something before then. But I always love these uh, identical hand things. So we have queen 10 against queen 10. Wapney technically has a little bit of equity with his 10 of hearts with two hearts on the board. And we'll likely be able to wrestle this one away with players having identical hands because how do you think you're good on an ace-eight-eight flop when you have queen-10? So you have to bet to get. I don't see Ikram calling here, or, but he could potentially raise if he thinks that his opponent doesn't have an ace. The most likely situation is a fold there. <laughs> and does fold. Maybe Wathney impressing. And shows the Queen 10. And being that Ikram had the same hand, he's getting a, like a little bit of frustration, a little bit laughing, mixed emotions there. And we have a new player coming to the TV table near the end of the day. We still probably have about 40 to 45 minutes left before we will conclude the stream for the evening and players will begin to bag chips. And it looks like he'll fit right into this dynamic of players having fun. Also seems to have a lot of chips, so fits in that way as well. <laughs> and Peterson with 680,000, <laughs> which is a very healthy stack as well at this point. I mean, when we have a stack of 1.5 million on the table, it doesn't seem that big, but it is a big stack. It is going to be above the average chip count, or right around the average at this point, because we did lose some more players. So if we do a little math here, the average stack should be at around 600,000, so not that much more than average, but at this stage of the game, having more than average is decent. Even having a little bit below average is okay, too. The first goal for some of these players, I'm not saying for all the players, is to make the money. Now, if you have 1.5 million chips, you're thinking about just how you can abuse players looking to make the money. But the guys on stacks of like 200, 300,000 really want to make the money, typically. And since it is a free zone, everybody will profit that makes some money. That's the big difference between a free SF and a re-entry event. Sometimes players even have to make a final table on a re-entry event to make money. 
<laughs> in this case, they just need to mint cash and they'll have 605 euro profit. But there's much, much more to come with more than 100,000 on the line for the winner in a few days' time. But meanwhile, we have Peterson, who just sat down at the table, has King Queen suited more than fine to open from any position. Has a fairly big under the gun opening size, but we haven't seen how he plays from other positions yet. Don't know too much about this player, but it's definitely a bigger size than we've seen from the other players at the table. And Glessel, who's been a little bit quiet lately, but still sitting on about 900,000, is looking about what to do with his ace jack. That is a new player, but it isn't under the gun open. These two should not be talking at the moment. There's still more players than not. But if they're joking around, I guess it's okay. But in theory, this is not, not good with more players still to act. A bit of bad etiquette, but it happens. And Davy having to pull the set three. I don't think he would even call the mid raise, but maybe would have seen that ace jack come into play. So welcome to the table, Peterson. Over 700,000 in chips. A few folds, including by Halsesen with that ace five suited, but it was from under the gun and Glessall with a hand after being very active with some speculative stuff early, has slowed down. But this he would want to open whether he's active or not. Opens for 27. And Jacobson calling, we'll see soon with what, with nines, okay. And it's a three bet, not a call with the nines. I think Lessel may think that uh, as Jacobson has rebet him at least twice before, that now he's having a go. We may see something happen, which I don't think will be a fold. It may be a four bet. It may be a call. Now Glessel's allowed to talk to Jacobson. They're the only two players in the hand during heads up play. This is more than fine, as long as they're not talking about the exact hands each other have. Table talk is allowed. Obviously, if Glessel takes way too long right now, that's not the case. The player can call the clock. The short stacks are more than happy to let this clock go, but there's not really that many short stacks at this table outside of Broden. Broden has been acting fast. And gives up on the ace queen. So Jacobson for the third time three betting and for the third time Glesso folding. But this time Glesso folded with respect that ace queen. Glesso was able to lay down jacks before to a four bet against Kings to save him quite a lot of chips. Of course, he could have gotten lucky, but odds were against him. short sec he looks very frustrated at this point 
And Glesso, once again with a premium ace. This time it's a bit better with ace king. I wouldn't expect him to go far if he is three bet again. A raise to 27. Sether, who has also been a little bit quiet and should be happy to see that cock tick away a little bit with just 29 players away from the money. Paul's a bit of a stack with 8-7 in position, so doesn't seem like the type of player concerned about the mid cash. And also, is a three to two favorite at this point in time. And what a flop there for Sether. Top pair, open-ended straight draw. Not the flop Vessel wanted to see at all. One of the worst flops he wanted to see. Does recognize that and checks it over. Let's see if he can get away from this hand. Vessel seems to have a good read in a lot of spots. But we'll be calling a bet of 40,000, and now the pot is up to 164,000. And now Sather with the straight, and Glessel only drawing to a chop if one of the three eights comes that are remaining in the deck. There are no flush draws, it's completely rainbow. So will Sether now try to disguise his hand? He does, he checks it back, and the jack of spades on the river. Now is Glesso gonna try to steal it away? He's looking down at his chips. This will not work out for him if he does, but it will also probably not cost him that much for the try. Depends on how big he makes it if he does bet. Sether being very sneaky, but it doesn't get Glessel to bet. Now Sether has to bet. He's only behind the 8-9. Would Glessel really be checking the river with 8-9 after Sether checked back that turn? He's probably not going to get any more value. I guess if we have a book of three, I'm in one day. Then we have a book of three. It does try though, it's not going to work, Glesso folds. Nice try by Sether to induce a bet, it looked for a moment that Gether was, was, going, to, uh, was going to take a stab at it. But perhaps he felt he had showdown value for his check back to him. It sounds like the mayhem on the table is extending to some of the fans too. There's just an announcement to stay outside the room. And he's on a look at the chip counts. So Glassel has been up and down, but still a nice stack of 808,000, but not as nice a stack as Felix Eichram with 911. And we saw Bjorn Halsenson win that massive pot with Queens against Ace King against Broden to get up to 1.5 million. Meanwhile, Broden was a short stack, built this stack up only to be on the losing end of that big hand we just talked about. And doesn't have a lot of room to play with. Needs something to happen and something to happen fast. And it looks like we lost another player or two down to 147 in the field. Still actually 36 off the money, so that's definitely not going to be reached today, but it should be reached <laughs> during the first blind level or two of tomorrow's day three. So be sure to tune back in for that. And Glesso with the mystery card and the seven opening up. 
Peterson, who is relatively new at the table, three betting with the ace five, and apparently his opponent was uh, <coughs> not having something that went well with that seven because snap bull did no thought process at all. <laughs> Absolutely loving every moment of this event, especially at the feature table. Hope you are too. This is Jason Glatzer. We'll be with you all week long. down to just 82,000, down to less than a starting stack at this stage of the game. Deciding this is his spot, he likely will be called with this suited queen four with Ikram waking up with an ace. It is the weak he says possible with the ace deuce off, but still in a blind on blind situation without him risking a, a, a lot of his chips. I expect Ikram to call and be slightly ahead here. <coughs> But it may be for more than 88. If it's for more than 88, because I thought I heard maybe 138, then Broden isn't as short as we thought, and then it could be a fold actually for a 10 big line shove. It makes a big difference whether this is 88 or 138. And I'm guessing it was the latter because he did fold his ace. Broden getting some chips. Still looks very deflated after losing that 1.5 million chip pop though. A small smile out of him now, so he's getting some life back. So probably about 30 minutes left to play. Watney not opting to play his threes, but Peterson reaching for chips with his twos. Opening for 32,000. And Broden with the nines expect to see a shove again, this time with an actual hand. Jams it for 162. And Glessel now has a decision to make with his eights. Apparently not a big one. Quickly folds. I oh know he doesn't fold. That was just push, helping push that small blind into the pile. But does fold. So he's making good reads with his hands. He folded jacks count? to Broden's kings before. Now he folded eights to Broden's nines. Peterson asking for a count. In this case, it was perhaps because Peterson's also in the hand. But yeah, he's miles ahead of Peterson. But Peterson would have likely gotten out of the way. We know he has twos. I don't One think he'll two. make the call here. Demon really thinks Broden is light. He's only like miles ahead of ace two. Otherwise, he's flipping at best. And as we can see, he crushed at worst. Close. 
It is near a 14 big blind shove, and Peter's saying it's close. And does make the call. Ready to gamble, but he's going to see that he's not really gambling so much. He is far behind them. Broden is on the comeback trail if his nines can hold against twos. <coughs> After taking that flip before with the ace king not getting there against queens. Neither playing, <laughs> ne neither player having hearts, but this could wind oh, up yeah, being yeah. a chop pot. Yeah. You can see it's 21% yeah. chance for a chop. Just yeah. one time. Yeah. And it's a chop pot, rather unfortunate yeah. for Broden. Yeah. Things yeah. not going his yeah. way. Yeah. Peterson yeah. celebrating Why? the chop pot there. <laughs> rather unfortunate for Broden in several ways. Yeah. First. Okay. That his opponent decided to call with twos, and second, that his nines didn't hold. It could have been worse. He at least is not out the door. It is a chop pot. <laughs> but Broden getting a bit lucky, unlucky, near the end of day two. <laughs> not as much with this hand. He's also unlucky, but losing that massive flip earlier. <laughs> Jacobson taking his time at the seven two. <laughs> Davey having nothing to do with his fours. Peterson shows he likes to play, but not this time with the ace five. And it's the table chip captain, Halsonson, with the ducks from the hijack, reaching for chips. Racing up to 25, a little more than a min raise. Rodin may see this as his opportunity. It is a hand that does play well against a wide range. Did just show down that he had nines last time he did this. Every time he's had to turn over his cards, he's had something. And Holsesen now in that same spot with his twos. That if he calls, he knows he's flipping at best. He's behind every pocket pair. In this case, it is a, a pure flip. <laughs> And Broden laughing. Oh God, that's that's nice. <laughs> He's facing twos. Holsonson not wasting too much time to call. I guess for him, it's not too much of his chip pile. But he'll be taking the rest of his twos hole, but it's not looking like it's going to be that way. Broden can breathe in a little bit oh, after pairing his jack on the jack <laughs> nine ace flop. The eight of spades falling on the turn. Just needs to fade two outs on the river to double his short stack. The five of clubs on the river is safe for Broden. Maybe he's on the comeback trail. At least he's double for now. Can end the day on a high note, assuming no other mayhem happens to him. And now you can see his smile is back again, the color back in his face. You cannot blame him for being disappointed earlier on after losing that 1.5 million chip pop. But now, back in business, near 400,000. Happy days for Broden. And the day is not too far from being over, but that's not something he doesn't get started. It's actually going to be a little bit more hot around me today. It's going to be a little bit more hot around me today. Vi er ferdig med dag to, og vi er veldig snart på vei inn i penga. Så er det fortsatt mange jenter som spiller denne turneringen. Vi står vi fra en annen her ved siden av Marte, som har nå en ganske bra stack. Hvordan føler du det har gått så langt? Det har gått bra. Jeg startet dagen med 50 000, så det var liksom å prøve å spinne fra start. Jeg hadde en veldig god start, og så et par smeller, så var det langt ned igjen. Jeg kom opp her for en time siden, så det er 270, og nå har jeg 
nærmere 900, så det er, det er bra. Det er snakket akkurat om at vi begynner å nærme oss inn i pengene og sånn. Dette er et godt tidspunkt å sitte godt over snitt. Det er mye mer komfortabelt å ha over snitt enn å sitte på sånn 20 bigs nå, hvor du kjenner at folk kan sette press og at det ikke er så mye spillerom da. Så en jente som er ganske big stack her altså, hvis jeg bare beveger meg over til det som er nabobordet, så kan jeg snike meg til andre siden her hvis jeg etter hvert kommer meg forbi. Fordi, Kristian, vi snakker om at det er, det er mange jenter igjen, og vi er på vei inn i pengene nå. Og, er, og vi ser vel dette år for år at jentene de slår bedre fra seg nå, og blir stadig flere som virkelig er gode. Absolutt, så det har merket du på ladies i fjor også. Mye høyere nivå enn før. Okay. Og hvordan føler du det har gått så langt i dag? Jeg er egentlig veldig fornøyd med spillet mitt. Jeg har ligget sånn 200k over Average Shell i dag, og så gikk jeg på en smell, og jeg kom og fits. Så nå er jeg litt ned, men det går bra. Men kanskje den jeg ser på bordet her som har størst akka jentene, det er deg Camilla? Det kan nok stemme. Og, og hva er det som er, har det vært noen store potter som har bygd opp, eller har det vært solid, fundamentelt spill hele veien? Ja, men nesten skryt å si at det har vært stabilt. Det har gått jevnt oppover. Ja, det har liksom ikke vært noe, noe spektakulært, nei. Og det er kanskje den deiligste måten å komme seg til den posisjonen, er det ikke det? Det er helt korrekt. Det er helt korrekt. Dette er jo da bare ett av to bord hvor det faktisk sitter to jenter fortsatt, og det er virkelig ikke bare jenter som spiller, dette er jenter som slår fra seg og som i aller høyeste grad er blant favorittene til å ta seg ordentlig langt til denne turneringen. Thank you, Svede, for bringing us one last update near the end of the night. For those of you that can understand Norwegian, that was probably very informative. Meanwhile, you can see the party lifestyle that's going on here tonight on Thursday night at the Norwegian Championship. Quite an amazing vibe everywhere in the building. And Glessel back to opening loose. He slowed down for a while. And Jacobson back to three betting him. Three times he three back Glessel. Three times Glessel folded. And make that four. Jacobson again getting away with one. It's not that he got away with it. He's had hands every time he's done it. This time it was a little bit oh, lighter with Ace Turner. I don't know that it's... I don't know that it's... I don't know that it's... I don't And if music is coming through my microphone, apologies for that. It is so loud, even though I'm tucked away, I can hear the party atmosphere that is taking place. Players have bag chips in real time. You can imagine based on what you see what it's going to be like after players back up. After losing that bet, went from 1.5 to 1.3, and still has a massive track stack. Rizzo back under the gun with Ace 4 suited. Ikram with the Ace 5. He is facing the under gun's opening range. If he plays this, I would like to see a 3 bet. I wouldn't mind seeing a fold, but Ikram knows best. He's been playing with these guys for a while. He's the one in the event. I'm the one in the booth. Oops. Oops. He's no, played no, safe, no, though, no, it looks like, no, with the no, call. Uh, the it was a call. Yeah. All the way around the big line and expect Peterson to complete or three back. I do not expect him to toss away his hand. This would be a bold move. But Peterson popping that open end straight draw. Nobody else popping much. Also with bottom pair. And a dump bet coming by Peterson, and it may actually work. Austin <laughs> recognizes that maybe there's some pink queens too. So even if he feels that his score is good, and Ace with the three is good, or maybe he doesn't because he's making the call, but Ikram only has that backdoor flush draw, gets out of the way. Perhaps good he did not three bet. Although I say that, and his back door is now a front door with the eight of diamonds coming up the turn, but he's no longer in the hand. 
Peterson is behind, needs a nine, queen, king, or eight yeah, to get through. But is continuing that he has something more than that king, queen, making it very difficult for Halsonson. Even though he's in position, Peterson taking control of the action with that dunk fight on the flop, and then another continuation on the turn. up on the best hand, although Peterson had a lot of draws, but aggressive poker pays off for Peterson, and picks up a tasty little pot near the end of the night, that's a little compared to his stack, he's up to 839,000. <laughs> Loving the different styles of play, we've seen at all four tables, all four feature tables today, and looking forward to more exciting action tomorrow and the rest of the way. <laughs> Ikram sure to open this ace queen suited. Opens for twenty-seven thousand. Jacobson also about to fold the 7-5 suited, indeed he does, one thing we know is folding, he's been folding much wider than that, Peterson, who seems to like to mix it up, but not this time, folds, and Halsonson likely to complete, we see that it, he wouldn't be in good shape with the green high flop, but he doesn't know that. And it is a queen high flop, wow. This could spell trouble for Alsonson. Both players with top pair, Ikram with the nut kicker. Alsonson checks, and he's gonna have to at least do something here, whether it's a call or raise. He can't pull a top pair, not after he defended with this hand. And he should be defending with this hand pretty much all the time. But maybe, Get away with putting out more, not on the four spades turn. <laughs> Let's see, Ikram bets his top pair, top picker again. He is reaching for chips. It's like 80,000. since it doesn't waste too much time in falling. And the eight of spades, River. This may slow Icom down because if he thinks that his opponent was potentially doing this with a 9-10, it got there. Maybe he feels his top pair isn't as good as it was. He would likely be willing to call a bet if Halsonson bets, but I would expect Ikram to be checking back a lot of the times so that Halsonson did check. As I say that he's reaching for chips for more value, maybe recognizes that he could be up against a worse queen. And bets about one third of the pot, so expect Halsonson to call here. Maybe not be too happy about it. Does call and gets the bad news. Nods its head, basically saying nice hand to Ikram. At this table, there should always be a waitress. Jeg vinner i sted, så snakket jeg om at det er to bord som har to jenter på seg akkurat nå, men jeg har funnet det andre. Her er det også en ordentlig villbass som ikke nødvendigvis er jente, men han har virkelig spilt bra poker i dag likevel, og er den soleklare chip-lideren i turneringen akkurat nå. Kajan Mokkeri, synes du det er gøy å spille poker? Ja, det er kjempegøy. Jeg synes det er med Ingevå og Henrik også, så det blir enda gøyere. Det er veldig fint.
Er det noen spesielle situasjoner i dag, eller har det vært hver pott og mye aggressivitet? Du, i dag har det vært mye hver pott og aggressivitet, ja. Og så har jeg vært litt heldig i noen situasjoner, kanskje. Jeg er ikke heldig, men jeg har fått litt... Folk har sett seg lei, da, og så har jeg hatt det. Henrik Tollefsen sitter jo da til din høyre her. Han har spilt opp, så han skal få lov å slippe å snakke i denne potten her. Men det er i hvert fall et utrolig spennende bord, og et bord som dessverre skal brytes opp ganske snart. Fordi vi er jo snart klar, vi får det som er slutten av dag to, og at vi etter hvert skal ta fatt på en tredje spilledag i morgen. Så, tilbake til aksjonen. Saitha raising to 25,000 from the Vojak with ace 10. Peterson deciding what to do from the button. We get a couple folds here. And Saitha picking up much needed chips has been quiet. Most of the time at this feature table. Get some more to put into his bag, perhaps, with the night about to come to an end. Alright, turn the ears to put the hand here on and deal three more hands. Turn the ears to put the hand here on and deal three more hands. So the four just announced the final three hands. sure if that's including this one because there was a hand you're on and this was being shuffled up so we shall see could be four more hands at the feature table but we're on the final few hands either way we look at it let's see who wants to get involved near the end of the night we saw mayhem break loose yesterday at the end of day 1b when we were honored to have Nicholas Carlson the chess legend at the table he was involved with several of those I do not know if he's still in, but we'll find that update before the start of tomorrow. But we do know that he doubled up twice earlier despite that. Not so much last night. Russell getting a steal with his queen jack. Adding 30,000 to his stack. It seems like maybe a wall needs to be set up. Uh, there's constant announcements about the spectators going to the rooms and trying to get rooms set up. having fun and you want to have fun with them but they'll be backing up soon enough so certainly at this time just give it a few minutes before uh, before chatting with your friends so that they're at the tables the players have earned the right to be at the tables the spectators have not
2,000 there. And Florida making the call. 42. It'll be interesting to see what happens on any river. Maybe not as interesting as I thought, actually. The Ace of Diamonds River, Broden should feel fairly secure. Obviously, he's behind the Queen-10, but he was behind Queen-10 all along. Definitely behind Ace-Jack, Ace-King, any sets. But if he was come through and walk to call the turn, he's probably going to call even an all-in on the river. But let's see what happens here. <laughs> and Peterson checks and Broden is now going to look for some value but by now after calling the turn board, <laughs> even though Peterson did smack a piece of this board it was a call from the button I think he'll be able to get away here indeed he does and I think this should be the final hand of day two. But let's wait and see to be sure. Last hand or second hand? It is the penultimate hand for day two. Thank you for asking, Jacobson. Now we all know, including those at home. <laughs> Jacobson asking that probably because he's in the big one next. So that pact is going to have him putting 24,000 in the pot next hand. Maybe he can get it back, but between the big mind and the ante, whereas if it ended this hand, we wouldn't be seeing that go in, and he'd be bagging what he has in front of him. But so far, holding around the Ikram, I expect it will be opening. He's reaching for chips. Raising it to 26, 27,000 from the button with 10, 7 suited. Lasso, who is an aggressive player, but an intelligent aggressive player, uh, holds. <laughs> and let's see what Sether does. Players would be defending this, but maybe he doesn't want to on the stack deck. But he does make the uh, correct defend from the big blind. That happens to actually be ahead. And now set their flopping top pair. Let's see if he tries to get the uh, Ikram to bet into him or whether he's going to dunk bet this himself. The problem is if it checks back, pretty much most turns are not going to be that good anymore. Then again, if he bets now, he's building the pot, and if he's facing a raise, maybe that's a good thing, but building the pot himself, so if he does lead out, I don't expect it to be big for these following reasons, and he does dunk bet, and it isn't the big one, just 21,000, and Ikram getting nothing there, quickly folds, and we're on our final hand, well played by Seth there, understanding the spot he was in. I don't often dunk that, but that might have been one of the times I do no, so. Suited hand, but doesn't want to play it under the gun during the last of the night. Peterson will likely play his King Jack off base on what we've seen from so far. I think he'd be opening a bit wider even, despite the early position. And raises it to 31,000. Gets Halsonson out of the way quickly. Holds around to Glessel, who I've been loving to watch play. <laughs> simply does with his ace-time position. With Peterson's 
big opening size, it makes it more difficult to creep up to a reasonable size. And Opsa just bag what he has. Jacobson may defend though. Queen 9 is defendable. It is once again a big size of now. So it looks like he will be folding, folks. So that is Queen it for day down two. Down there will be probably this. less than 139 players I back again. Some of the outer tables are now still going on. on. But thank you very much for joining us for day two of the Norwegian Championship main event here at Card Player Casino. There will be three more days of play at the main event. We'll try to bring you some more action from some of the side events too. The ladies event starts before you know it as well. So perhaps that will right, be on the stream. But thank you very much. This is Jason Glatzer bringing to you the action. Have a good night. And peace.